So tell us why you started um, your blog, Industry Standard, and tell us how being a blogger changed your perspective on the industry or enhanced it or improved mm -hmm. it, your career in any type of way. Um, okay, so I started the Industry Standard because I'm very prone to making long Facebook posts and um, usually talking about just whatever, honestly, but some, some commentary on mankind or the industry or whatever it is. And one girl who saw it, she said, you know, I love reading your blog post, I wish you had a blog, or I, I love reading your Facebook post, I wish you had a blog. And I was like, that's probably better because some people don't love reading these really long Facebook rants. So I started the blog and, and I wanted to do it was hard. What am I going to write about? I didn't want to write. A, there's so many blogs about follow my journey in LA. That's not what this is about. I wanted to write actor to actor. Um, I'm on your. I'm on your. I'm your peer. I'm on your same level. Let's discuss what's going on, what we encounter, and how can we learn from these situations. So, it's an advice blog. There's some announcements and stuff on there when I'm on a TV show or something, but for the most part. It's advice. It's things that I've learned in my different fields. I've worked in casting. I've worked. Um, I've directed and uh, acting, and dancing. So you know, I've done a lot in the industry. So I just wanted to share some of that knowledge. I've taken a lot of classes. I spent a lot of money on classes. Some of this advice should be free. So that's kind of where it came from. Um, yeah, that's that's why I started the blog. I just want. I want to build a more supportive community in the acting industry. That's nice that you took your experiences and now you're spreading your knowledge and yeah, and it's back just one person's examples, but this comes from a lot of experience and, and talking to casting directors and being a casting director. What do they look at? What is pilot season like? Um, and just trying to take away some of the the fear, you know, about. Uh, auditions if I do all this stuff I have one called audition checklist if you do these things you're gonna be so much more prepared in the room you know um, I just want people to go in there do their best because I'm a firm believer that something if it's for me it's for me nobody can take that away so you being the best prepared that you can be if the role is for me I'm still gonna get it because I'm gonna come in the best prepared that I can be so um, I just want everybody to put their best foot forward, especially up and comers, because we need to start taking over and, and getting our names out there too. Um, Straight Outta Compton, for example, so many new faces. This movie has made so much money. You know, give unknowns a chance. So what's the best response or best feedback you've got from um, your blog? Because obviously as a blogger, when you get feedback, it's amazing. So yeah. what was one comment somebody left or somebody who kind of stopped you on the street or stopped you at an event? That's something that you kind of like made, like warmed your heart and, and, and made it seem that the blog was worth it making it. Um, the blog is actually kind of therapeutic for me too anyway. So just the fact that I have it makes me feel good. Um, I get a lot of people just sharing the article. That's what makes me feel good is people being able to see the information. There's not one comment that stuck out to me um, as of yet, uh, but the fact that people share it is what's making me happy, you know, because I want, I actually want people to do well in this industry. I, I, I know I don't, I may not read or know you, but if you're reading this article and you have a leg up because of it, I'm really excited about that. So I just want people to share. If you share it, then more people, more actors are going to see it. And then we can foster, like I said, a more supportive community. So recently you went to the Blog Her event in New yeah. York City. So that's, that's a huge event for bloggers. So tell us about your experience there. Yeah, it was, I mean, I think I had just started my, well, I started my blog in um, February. And then I went to New York, I think that was two months ago. Yeah. So I went to New York and um, I was going there for Lyft because Lyft, I drive for Lyft sometimes. And they asked me to come over and then I said, what kind of event is it? And they said, it's a blog her event. And I was like, blog her? So it was just one of those things, you know, I'm very a much a proponent of putting things out into the universe and then coming back to you. So when I started my blog and then all of a sudden I get to go to this massive blogger event and I uh, got so many, made a lot of friends 
some really good advice um, about how to keep these blogs going. Because for me, I'm not so much in the tech side of it, but there's a very big tech side that you need to get, you have to have knowledge on to get your information out there, to rank on Google and all this. So it was kind of perfect for me to see that because I have great friends and supporters and families on my Facebook, so uh, family members on my Facebook, uh, so they all share my stuff, but they're not all in the business. I want people in the business to see it, so how can I rank in Google? And so it was great. It was like being surrounded by all of those, and it's blog her, so women. You know, it was so powerful. All of these women, we had Gwyneth Paltrow speak, and then my favorite, Ava DuVernay, I mean, she was there, and I got a chance to hear her. It was. I had ran, I didn't run into her, but I saw her at a coffee shop around award season and I just wanted to say how much this, this um, documentary that I watched called Women in Hollywood, she had said something on there that made me feel like I could actually be a director um, because I didn't know that that was actually a job women could do. 100% honest, I didn't know that we were allowed. So I have all these stories, I'm a writer, I do all of this, but I didn't know I could direct. And so when she said it, and she said, you know, you don't have to wait for some old white man to tell, to give you permission. You just go out and do it, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, but she said something to that effect. And ever since then, I was like, oh my God, I love her. So I didn't get a chance to see her at this coffee shop. I didn't stop and talk to her. I didn't want to bother her. But I got to go to New York, and they're like, yeah, one of our keynotes is Ava DuVernay. So I'm like, ah, great. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare. You don't have the right. You broke us. So speaking about Please. directing, your Scandal found Please. film, Impossible, which yeah. you're the co-director, the writer, is a huge hit on YouTube, over 13,000 views. Oh, thank you. Um, Guillermo, aka Huck from Scandal, yes. retweeted it recently. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the formation of that and uh, just the experience of that and then yeah. putting it out there in the world. Well. Um, I was listening to The Light by the album Leaf. It's aka Fitz and Olivia's theme. Kind of plays whenever they have like this really emotional something going on. I love the show Scandal, by the way. Shonda Rhimes is my other big inspiration. So um, I was listening to the song and then I was like, I just want to write a scene to this song. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to do something that's already been in the show, but I just want to write something different, you know, um, but using the two characters. So I went home that night and I wrote the script and then I was like, yeah, this is great. Then um, I asked my friends to film it. He owns a red um, and he, the like Wilder, he's uh, Wilder Harms, he's my DP. And because it was my first time directing, he just gave me a lot of pointers and really helped out. And so I was like, I'm going to give you a co-director credit because, you know, it's my first time doing it. I'm not, it's not stingy when it comes to credits. Um, and yes, I was in a very weird position because I was in the scene acting. And then I'd have to come out and be like, okay, playback, I want to see you do it this way instead because uh, my co-star is Christian Howard. And so I was directing him and I was like looking at myself and then just kind of internally directing what I wanted. But then I had to get back in and not be the director and just be the actress and feel, you <laughs> yeah. know. So it was a great experience, but I definitely wanted to give uh, Wilder some credit on that because it's hard to do both. Um, so yeah, I, it was literally like, I heard the song, I got inspired, I wrote the script, got the crew together. I think all in all, it took me three weeks to get it all settled, yeah. Tell us how you got your Olivia Pope on. There's plenty of <laughs> Olivia Pope impersonations, but when I saw that, that was very convincing. Really? You had the oh, wine glass, you. you had the, the facial expression, <laughs> you had the angst. So how did you, how did you prepare for the fan film? Obviously, you watched Scandal, but what yeah. else did you do? Um, I I watched Scandal. Also, I I know some of the way she gestures, you know, um, and it's a lot of a lot of what she does is, I guess, it's just a well-oiled machine because the scripts are so good, and and they take those that material and they. It just, it works. It's hard to explain. So the material is almost written perfectly for the the actions and stuff that they they wind up doing. Um, there's this kind of rule of three. I don't know if other people recognize it, but normally 
anybody when they're yelling at somebody, they normally do it three times, you know, and Olivia is very much about that. She's like, you know, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here, you know, and it's like the different intensities, but um, it's just, it's, that's what they do. And so I think just watching it, knowing the script and then writing a script that is very much in the vein of Scandal helped me kind of get into that character. Um, that and just doing the work as an actress. I get a script, I break it down, what's going on in the scene, and uh, what am I feeling? And I'm very lucky because the show existed, so I was able to pull from their history and, and know what's going on in her head, for the most part. So Shauna Rhimes called you up right now. She says, I, need, I possibly need you for How to Get Away with Murder or yeah. Scandal in uh -huh. the second half. Yeah. of the uh, season. Uh -huh. Which type of role would you like to play in either or both? Um, anything. Honestly, I would take anything. I would write for Shonda. I would do any any role that she asked of me. Um, I would love it. So it's safe to say you're a gladiator? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I noticed that you also kickbox as well. So you do that to... <laughs> Relieve stress. No, you know what? I just, um, what? I've never been somebody who's, this is going to sound horrible, but um, working out has not been something I've always done. So as I'm getting older, I just want to make sure that, you know, I start these, these uh, very healthy habits early. So I started doing a lot of different kinds of workouts. I do some aerial stuff. I do some kickboxing, some taekwondo, you know, I for me, a workout needs to be something like an activity that's fun that also breaks the sweat because I can't just do the gym. That's not fun to me. <laughs> so if you were involved in a uh, kickboxing movie or an athletic movie, then would you be interested in something like that? Oh, of course, would yeah. Would you prepare for the role? Of course, yeah. I have um, a kind of a athletic body, so... I would hope in the future that I get a chance to do something superhero-esque, you know. Um, my cousin actually created this uh, really cool comic book um, called Daughters of the Dragon. So it would be super cool. It's for it was Marvel, I believe. Yeah. So it would be super cool if they made that a movie and I could be one of his comic book characters. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your dream role? I mean, you don't have to limit it to being an actress. You could talk about in, in terms of uh, being a blogger. What role um, you would like to be there? A director, a writer, who you who who you would like to work with? What is your ultimate and dream role? Um, well, okay, I don't, I don't have like an ultimate dream role. I have an ultimate dream goal, and uh, it's on my wish board. Basically, I want to be someone who can win an Oscar in the same year uh, for best screenplay, original or adapted, and best um, female performance, and that's either, you know, supporting or lead, and I want that to be in the same year for two different films. <laughs> so that's my dream goal, is that if I can do that, then I'm going to be super happy. Wow, that's ambitious, but... So I figure I just have to, like, write a movie every year and star in a movie every year, and then one day those things will collide. One day those things will match up and you'll yeah. get your dream goal. Yes. So, so far in your career, in your life, what is the boldest thing you've ever done? Um, the boldest thing that I've, ever, I've ever done... To uh, this point. Oh, that's a hard question. I kind of live boldly every day. So, I think kind of the boldest choice I've made, and it's not like a one day thing it's an everyday thing it's just you can get into this business a lot of different ways and sticking to my guns and doing it my way um, and not I, I don't want to make anyone feel bad but not doing the easy way you know um, just sticking to my guns and saying you know what I want a career that has longevity so sometimes that means it's going to take longer to get there and that is what I consider the boldest move I made. You know, I, I could have done a lot of different things to get there faster, and but I didn't. And so that's bold, you know, to say I'm not going to take the easy route. I'm going to go 
and become an artist and however long it takes however long it takes yeah taking the road uh, less traveled is definitely yeah the bolder take on things <laughs> exactly so where can people reach you so people can reach me um by following me on twitter at crystal m harris that's crystal with a k and on instagram at slim 233 k I know it's not it's not like the best Instagram name, but there's a reason I have hey, that name. Hey, it's creative, right? Yes. <laughs> and then um, also you can find me on my official Facebook page, Facebook slash Crystal and Harris Official. And then you can find me on Young, Bold, and Regal. 